Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. So now let's get to the topic of what exactly is a controller, right? So far we have had a lot of discussion about actions, requests and responses, APIs and with CRUD as an example, but it's still sort of, you know, bouncing around the topic of what exactly is a controller? Why do we, you know, have that specific, what do we need to infer over there, right? And this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. As I said, a lot of the, uh, if you stick too closely to what exactly is the definition of a controller, you might sort of get lost in what you're trying to implement, right? The first thing to understand is what are actions and then why would you really think of a controller as something specific, right? So the CRUD as a, an example set of actions, right? Create, read, update, delete. They are actions. They are things that you would request the server to do on your behalf, right? And they may or may not result in changes to the uh, database, but will sort of, you know, result in something coming back from the database, which then needs to get displayed appropriately. <coughs> but there are certain other actions also that can be performed by requesting something from the server. So for example, I might have something which, you know, sends an email when I invoke a certain action or it might write some information to a log file or it might send an alert you know using <coughs> some other kind of api on whatsapp telegram something like that or in the case of a quiz or assessment right i mean it might do something like okay checking a particular answer right or requesting additional time for the quiz right various other things that are not directly creating reading updating or deleting a specific object within the database right there could be sort of side actions that are happening out there. So one question that we can sort of ask is, are there actions that can be grouped together logically? And if so, it then starts to make sense to think of that as th that set of actions as a controller for a particular type of model. Okay. And that is the most common way in which you will not sort of see controllers used in practice. Having said that, in general, controllers are used to implement any kind of action. So almost anything that you want would ultimately be called a controller, but they really become useful when you are thinking in terms of one common set of actions, which is logically connected together and which relates to one particular data model perhaps, okay? So this is an example from a framework which is in the PHP programming language, right? And it's a framework called Laravel. Some of you may be familiar with it, right? And uh, Laravel tries to implement the MVC framework over there, right? And in fact, they have this thing called a resource controller, right? Which is once again, one of the design patterns that they provide. You can essentially implement something called a resource controller. And let's say you define a resource controller to handle a certain class of objects called photos, right? What it says is that just by essentially associating the resource controller with the object photos, right? You automatically sort of benefit from a large number of actions that are sort of predefined for you, okay? What kind of actions? Index. What do you think index would do? To me, when I hear the term index, it's sort of at least given the context in which we have looked at different uh, things, index probably would be a list of all the photos that I have, okay? Create nice simple name right create a new photo so does that mean actually click something on a camera probably not in this case we are talking more about the database end of things right not really about the action of taking a photograph but about storing it somewhere so create in this case most likely means create the storage space to save a photograph right and take the binary data from the camera or wherever else it is and put it into that database now there is a distinction between create and store as you can see right that's a slightly subtle distinction but it depends on the framework itself right and what it usually means in a context like this is this create is just the first part of the story it has created an, an object in the memory of the server okay and you can now manipulate that object you can you know assign certain binary data for the photograph you can give it a title you can give it a caption you can give it additional maybe geographic information, where was it shot, time of shooting, right? Uh, maybe tags, who are the people associated, uh, people in the photograph, things like that. 
all of that is part of you know the creation but there is actually a separate step which stores the information okay and that as you can see the difference is it comes in post okay so now what's the difference over here you can see that if i use the verb get look at this term they are using verb right and as you can see the verb essentially refers to the http request parameter okay is it a get or a post or two new things out here right put or three new things put or patch or delete okay things that we have not seen before so what do you think would happen if you called a get slash photo slash create it looks as though it would probably just you know create information but most likely it also requires some additional information out here right which tells you a little bit about what to create because otherwise it's just going to create a new photo and it's not quite clear what to put over there because a get request is just that it is a http url right i could literally call server name slash photo slash create it would create something for me but what right i have not given it the information okay on the other hand when i have a post inside the post it would correspond to some kind of a form most likely i would have a file upload field where i would actually specify the file to be uploaded and stored that's when it actually stores it somewhere in the database okay now i could further actions right i could request a show which basically says take some photo id you can see this parameter in the curly brackets over here which is most likely going to be a number it might be some other kind of identifier that uniquely identifies the photo the reason why i say number is because that typically corresponds to the primary key used inside most databases but some databases might not use a number they might use you know some kind of combination of alphabets or something like that some kind of a unique key right uniquely identify unique identifier that's all you really need and if i get slash photo slash photo id that's great it basically should just show me that photo okay how exactly does it display well you need some view corresponding to that so what you can see over here is each of these actions can essentially be thought of as a controller why because a user could invoke an action by calling one of these urls okay that would go into the server the server would then do something with the database either create a new object or retrieve an object and it would then invoke a view which comes back to the user you know the view might be in the case of create it basically says successful you know great you stored it or you saved it or in the case of a get right the show it will probably show you the picture okay so what kind of view comes back as a result of invoking a certain controller that's also some information that is known to the controller right it can be decided by the controller at the end of the day there are more such actions right edit and similarly update i might want to update let's say the metadata or i might want to update the picture itself right i change the lighting i do a few edits to it and save it back and finally i might just want to delete it okay so you can see that all of these actions are sort of implicitly created for you the moment that you use one kind of a standardized controller in this framework okay so that is what i meant by saying that controllers have their maximum utility when you are trying to do things which are logically related and have some commonality to them okay so to summarize all of this right actions essentially are encoding the interaction between the view and the model right the view essentially presents you with certain links or buttons that you can click they invoke actions on the server those actions could either modify the database or just pull data out of the database from the model and will then send back a new view for the user to see when you can group some of these actions together logically is usually when you call it a controller although you might also entirely well find that you know you have a controller which just performs a single action right so controller and action can sort of be thought of as very similar uh, concepts right and for all practical purposes at least in the context of this course i will not be sort of differentiating too much between them right now when you start grouping certain actions or controllers together you can actually construct a complex set of capabilities for the server which is usually exposed in the form of an api an application programming interface right 
and the most important part of all of this is for the web applications that we are looking at all of this interaction is going to happen through http requests right purely through http requests not through any other means and the http verbs right so get post put patch delete i think there's an update also right are used in order to convey certain meanings but if you really look at the underlying ideas over there those verbs are not fundamental to the thing, right what is more important is as long as both sides have agreed that a certain request in a certain form to a server will result in a certain kind of action right as long as the client and the server both know and understand that that defines your api whether you choose a get verb or a put verb or something else over there is not the most important part right http just provides you certain mechanisms it does not enforce them it does not say for example that you know you have to use only get in order to retrieve data or for that matter that you need to use delete in order to delete a certain uh, object right i could use a get request to actually invoke an action that deletes an object in the database that's perfectly valid and perfectly fine as long as both sides know that this is what is expected so what is most important over here is that you sort of think of this in terms of certain rules of thumb right rather than saying okay you know this is precisely how something needs to be implemented one rule of thumb is it should be possible to change a view and the model should never need to know about it okay another way of thinking about it is that if i have gone from a mobile phone display to a desktop right the underlying model should never know or care the only thing that could possibly change is which controllers are used in order to are invoked in order to get data back and more importantly which views are sent back right the controller has a part to play over there right the controller definitely needs to know what kind of view to send back right after retrieving certain data from the database and similarly it should also be possible to change the underlying storage model so for example if i want to go from an sql like database to a mysql database or a postgresql database the views should never know that there was a difference right and this is in fact where the orm the object relation manager right what we are going to be using as sql alchemy in the implementations comes into play right the orm that mapper essentially sort of abstracts away the database from the user so that you don't need to worry about which is the underlying database or what kind of requirements it has the views don't change based on that okay so both of these are important sort of rules of thumb to keep in mind while designing the system one other thing is that the actions or the controllers generally never talk to a database directly okay what i mean by that is if you find yourself writing an sql query directly inside what looks like controller logic right you should probably pause and say no this is not a clean separation of functionality the only thing that's allowed to talk to a database is a model okay so that is where the functionality sort of you know that separation happens very cleanly right now this part of it right actions never talk to a database directly is very important to keep in mind that keeps one part of the separation very clear on the other hand what you will very often find in practice is that the views and controllers tend to be a lot more closely linked what i mean by that is you cannot for example say that the controller should never know which view to send back that doesn't really make sense the controller has to know which view to send back right which means that if i change a view i might potentially need to go and change controller code as well right in order to know that this is the right view to invoke given a certain action or a certain result of an action okay and you will often find that you know people tend to link these a little bit more closely the views and controllers are sort of more tightly coupled right controllers need to invoke certain views depending on what response has come from the model okay and bottom line is this at the end of the day this is more about a way of thinking rather than specific rules of design right you cannot say that okay i am following mvc therefore i cannot do this or i must do it in a certain way if it turns out that that's making the design too complicated it may not be the best way of doing it